So I was going to start today's episode with a pun, but I couldn't be bothered. I recently found some original install media for BOS 4.5, the operating system that almost became Mac OS 10 instead of, well, the Mac OS 10 we actually got. So today we're going to build the ultimate PowerPC Mac BOS machine to install it on using this heavily modified and upgraded power computing Mac clone. And we'll hopefully recreate a setup that I absolutely drooled over when I saw it in magazines as a kid. But was BOS really the Mac OS killer that reviewers claimed back in the day? And does this CD-ROM I found even work? Will we ever find out the true identity of the hideous whiteboard guy? All that and more coming up, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy building up vintage computers to be all that they can be, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We don't always have this many obscure operating system puns, but when we do, they're terrible. Now, in order to do this right, we're gonna have to do something that we've never ever done in the history of this channel. We're going to de-upgrade a Mac. Now, if you're not familiar with this power computing power wave, here's a brief synopsis. It's a Macintosh clone released in 1995 with Apple's blessing, sort of like an official Hackintosh. It originally came with a PowerPC 604 processor at 150 megahertz, 16 megs of RAM and a 4X CD-ROM drive running macOS 7.5.2. Well, last year we went a little uh, <laughs> overboard upgrading this thing. As it stands now, it has a one gigahertz G4, one gig of RAM, a SATA SSD and controller card, a DVD-ROM drive, and macOS 10 Tiger. All this so I could play Minecraft on a Mac from 1995. Was it worth it? We don't ask those kinds of questions around here. But if you want to see the original build and learn more about the super weird world of the official Macintosh clone program back in the 90s, check out this video series here. It's a little older, so the production quality is not quite the same, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, those intense upgraded specs might be a little bit aspirational for B, though it could actually work and uh, yeah, we'll find out. But I want to start with something a little closer to the original specifications with this 604 processor, because actually BOS in the late 90s had this exact power computing machine in mind. But that's enough rambling. Let's get BOS running on this machine, and then we'll talk a little bit more about this really interesting operating system and why a Macintosh clone from 1995 is just so appropriate for it. Hey. Do you like printed circuit boards? Well, good thing today's sponsor is PCBWay. PCBWay just moved to a state-of-the-art new production facility, and with increased efficiencies comes decreased pricing. So now is the perfect time to hit them up for high-quality PCB prototyping and production. And they do all kinds of other things, including 3D printing, injection molding, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and they even have PCB assembly services. PCBWay is a longtime sponsor and friend of this channel, and I'm so glad to have them around. So if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you give PCBWay.com a try. Okay, so the way I wanna approach this is we're gonna take all the wacky upgrades out of here, except for some of the RAM. And then we're gonna do a fresh install of macOS System 8 Power Computing Edition from official install media because hey, we're a professional outfit around here. Then we'll try to install BOS alongside it because you're supposed to be able to do a dual booting setup very easily, although I have no idea how to do that. This is my first time installing it. Yay, we're learning together. <laughs> One gigahertz G4 processor replaced with 150 megahertz 604E processor. Yeah, that's about G2. Ooh. 
Wildly Inappropriate Radeon 9250. SATA controller card. I'm sure that's not going to work. I guess we're not going to need SATA SSD in quick release enclosure. Look at these absolute monster 128 megabyte RAM sticks that are in here. I'm going to take this down to a nice 256 meg. So let's take out most of these sticks. And we'll stick in a Rage 128, kind of a standard issue PowerPC Mac video card. And for the hard drive, I'll leave in our SCSI to SD here to give us at least a little bit of luxury, but this will just look like a 16 gigabyte hard drive to the computer and hopefully BOS will be fine with it. We need to find just the right monitor to pair with this thing to make the perfect setup. Oh my God, it's so heavy. <sighs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Steve from Mac 84, for helping me score this beautiful Sony Trinitron at last year's VCF East. <laughs> Man, look at this setup. And it died. I'm starting to think it's the power supply, actually, because I can hear the fan kind of turn on full blast and then slow down a little bit. And then one time it just shut off on its own. And I've been having problems with this machine since VCF East, where I had it running for like eight hours a day, nonstop with all these crazy upgrades on the original power supply. So never fear, we have another clone we can use. Check it out. It's the UMAC Super Mac S900. Now there's a name we haven't heard in quite a long time, but this is actually perfect because first of all, it uses the exact same processor card that the power computing used. And in fact, I put the 604 processor card in this machine straight out of the power computing but impressively this machine can actually take dual cpus we could put two 604 processors in this thing well if i could find the incredibly hard to find second proprietary processor card that this thing uses so in here we have a nice array of drives including a zip and a jazz drive that'll be fun to see if bos can actually recognize it and I have this cool five CD changer in here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it'll be fun to see if BOS recognizes that because Mac OS sees this as five separate CD-ROM drives on the SCSI bus. All right, well, apparently this drive doesn't want to work anymore. So uh, yeah, let's uh, find another drive. All right, plan B, the good old external SCSI Apple CD. There we go. Much better. So, yeah, this comes up as BOS Tools, and, uh, huh. I'm not exactly sure what to do with this. But we also have a handy installation guide. Oh, and there's stickers in there, too. <laughs> All right. Okay, so according to this, we open the Macintosh folder, the BOS Mac Tools folder. Oh, there's an extension to drag to your extensions folder and uh, an icon to put on the desktop. All right, let's give this a shot. Okay, OS Chooser can go to extensions. And then BIOS Launcher to the desktop. Nice. And let's run it. Okay, nothing happening. Let's restart. Hey, neat. We now have an option to start BOS. Problems! See this lovely B logo on the screen here? Yeah, that's as far as this will get. And uh, <laughs> I've tried about a million things so far. Well, I tried everything that the B operating system installation guide told me to try if it wasn't booting all the way into the CD. 
And uh, yeah, I tried, well, loading it off of RAS SCSI to cheat, but that didn't recognize the image at all. I also tried every video card I could find, and I tried trial and erroring a bunch of settings on the RAS SCSI itself. So let's try a bunch of increasingly desperate things to get BOS running on PowerPC. Hey! I tried an ancient, scuzzy, regular spinning hard drive, 700 megs, and I guess BOS likes that one and not the scuzzy to SD, so yeah, check it out. <laughs> we are actually now in the BOS installer. Let's see if I can get some screen capture going. Weird, my totally not janky screen capture solution does not seem to like BOS. All right, up close and personal with the camera. Moray effect, hopefully under control. Let's install B. And it froze. <laughs> Not kidding. Oh, it's completely frozen. Oh my God. <laughs> B. All right, well I restarted and uh, yeah. Now no mouse cursor, let's try this again. All right, third time's the charm, I guess. <laughs> let's just... Uh, Oh no, it froze again. <laughs> oh my god. BOS, my nemesis. Hello. Hello, computer. Okay, well this time, for some reason, it can't find the bootable volume on the CD-ROM drive. Rescan for bootable volumes. Let's try reinserting the CD. Okay, it found, uh, yeah, look at that, BOS R4 5.2 PPC file system type BFS. Okay, boot from that. And it went away again. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's no, like, scratch on the CD. I guess I could wipe it down. There it is. Okay, maybe that worked. It says it's booting. Nope. It just stopped. <laughs> BOS! Okay, well, I just played around with the settings of SCSI to SD again. And uh, yeah, this time it is going into the boot <laughs> of BOS. Let's see if it freezes. Agree. Scanning for disks. Don't freeze, don't freeze. And it froze. <laughs> hmm. Let's trial and error some more stuff. Okay, I'm gonna get weird. I'm gonna put a G3 upgrade in there and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so it went to the B logo and then to a gray screen. Why is it gray instead of blue? <laughs> huh. Yeah, look, the colors are all messed up. I think it's in four color mode. And it froze. <laughs> oh, you. Hey, wow, look how cool BOS is. Isn't this neat? Look, we're on Google and everything. Just kidding. Yeah, this is actually Haiku OS, running on my Core 2 Duo white MacBook. And uh, yeah, I was going to get into Haiku after we took a look at BOS on PowerPC, the original, except I didn't realize that PowerPC BOS is a literal Nightmare! Oh my god, I can't believe this was so difficult. But Haiku, on the other hand, Haiku is easy. You see, Haiku is the open source continuation of the spirit of BOS and also the user interface because BOS was discontinued back in 2001-ish. It's actually a little more complicated than that because it's sort of sputtered out with a slow, weird death instead of just being flat out discontinued. But the history of BOS is really interesting. It was founded by Steve Sackoman and Jean-Louis Gassier, who was an Apple employee who left Apple. And actually, famously, there's a story of Jean-Louis holding Steve Jobs up against a wall by his shirt collar in a heated discussion at Apple in Europe. B Inc. originally sold their own hardware in addition to the lovely BOS, which was optimized for multiprocessors used in what we call B boxes, which uh, yeah, that's a holy grail machine for me that, well, 
Nobody bought them. They're incredibly expensive. After the hardware failed, B then targeted PowerPC, specifically PowerPC Max. But even there, it petered out, especially with Mac OS X on the horizon, and B decided to go in the direction of parsing out BOS kind of piecemeal on internet-connected appliances. Well, it kind of faded into obscurity, where it sort of remains today. Except Haiku <laughs> has kind of really been killing it. Haiku is so fast and incredibly responsive, and it will run on just about anything. A potato, even. I mean, this is a very old MacBook, and it's buttery smooth, but I have Haiku actually on a bunch of really old ThinkPads. Oh, I almost forgot to show you my favorite feature in Haiku and BOS. We'll open a web browser, we'll open a, a file manager here, let's open another file manager, and then check this out. Every window can dock with every other window into tab groups of windows. I love this feature. Let's get a little GL teapot. Yep, we can dock that too. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like tab browsing way ahead of its time for the entire operating system. Man, I'll tell you, I was obsessed with Haiku for a while. So I'll leave a link to Haiku down in the description below because if you want a taste of BOS in the modern era, definitely check out Haiku. Okay, so that'll do it for today's BOS shenanigans. I think that went great. I mean, sure, one of my favorite clones inexplicably died, and BOS turned out to be absolute nightmare fuel to install on PowerPC Max, even the machines it was specifically designed to run on. But maybe we've learned something today, that sometimes persistence does not pay off. And maybe I've inspired some of you to check out Haiku, which is an absolutely amazing open source project. And this isn't the last of this humble little nightmare CD. I'm actually going to send this off to a friend of mine who has some, well, extremely interesting machines uh, that hopefully will take this install a lot better. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of whatever the heck this is, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alberto Guier, Camilla Noceto, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Dwight Spencer, Greg from Prut K Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for making these shenanigans possible.